What exactly are you? An assassin. And you listen to me very carefully, Mr. 47. Because the last time I checked, you're locked in here with me. And I'm the one with the gun. No. Oh my god. This is a top assassin. He has no surname. No name. Only a QR code tattooed on the back of his head. His code name is 47, and 47's current mission is to assassinate Dr. Litvenko, who transformed them years ago, as well as to destroy other transformation bases. Years ago, a mysterious organization initiated a powerful genetic research project to end the cruelty of war by transforming humans. Through genetic modifications, they created the perfect killing machines, and this project was successfully completed. Dr. Litvenko looking at them devoid of emotions and fear, engaging in inhuman killings every day, their eyes only focused on completing the organization's missions, felt a pang of conscience. Thus, he destroyed all research data and fled the mysterious organization, the government, worried about the exposure of this project, terminated it, leading the surviving agents to fall into darkness. Eventually, they handed the project over to a highly mimetic Dr. Del Rigo. Dr. Del Rigo, cold-blooded and ruthless yet extremely efficient in research, never gave up and continued to search for the only one who could restart it. Litvenko. After six years of searching, Del Rigo found a girl named Katia in the database, whose blood matched that of Litvenko. Meanwhile, their system was invaded by a virus. The one operating the virus invasion was 47, as the alarm sounded. To protect Dr. Del Rigo's safety, they hurriedly covered him and evacuated the building. As their car drove out of the building, it fell into 47's trap. The driver pressed the button in his hand. The remaining two cars immediately changed their routes, and as the vehicle approached a turn, the driver was suddenly attacked by 47 and died on the spot. Only Del Rigo's car narrowly entered another secret base and scathed. Through the retinal scanner, he opened the safe room of the base. Del Rigo immediately ordered his two subordinates to turn on the full surveillance of the base. Seeing his subordinates unmoved, Del Rigo stepped forward to check, only to find they had long been dead. As Del Rigo turned around, 47 also took out his remaining subordinates. Under 47's interrogation, Del Rigo revealed Katia's location, after which 47 ignored Del Rigo and left. 47's disregard enraged Del Rigo, who immediately ran to open the armory. However, the alarm on the base went off. A large number of security personnel came to support. Taking advantage of the dark light, 47 took out the wire from his pocket and killed a security guard from behind in one move. Then, with smooth and flowing movements, 47 effortlessly took down all the security guards who came to support. The boss of Syndicate International, who was behind the scenes, also received the news that the research institute had been destroyed. Lo Clerk immediately ordered his subordinates to find Katia before 47. Meanwhile, Katia was also searching for Litvenko's whereabouts but to no avail. Born with extraordinary perception, Katia could sense impending events. Just as she lay down to sleep, her mind sensed 47 approaching with a pistol in hand feeling vaguely that this was detrimental to her. Katia quickly packed her things and fled. 47 arrived shortly after, but Katia had already left. Just as Katia reached the subway station, a man who called himself John blocked her path. John uttered Katia's name and informed her that an assassin was coming to kill her, and if she wanted to live, she should follow him. Katia didn't want to engage in much conversation with John. However, she sensed 47's arrival and had no choice but to trust John. At this moment, 47 appeared, and a firefight ensued, allowing Katia to escape. Just as 47 was about to raise his pistol, John quickly lunged at him, and they fought from the surface down to the subway tracks. After a struggle, it was clear John was no match for 47. Fortunately, a passing train halted 47's pursuit. John immediately took Katia to a waiting car outside. But as the car started, the driver's head was struck by a bullet. The car crashed into a nearby vehicle, and John immediately took Katia out of the car to escape. When they reached the embassy of a certain country, John unhesitatingly fired shots into the air, and the embassy soldiers promptly detained them. They thought they were safe now. Unexpectedly, 47 blatantly carried a sniper rifle, stunning the security personnel. 47 was carrying a couple of pistols on his belt. 47 was taken to the interrogation room. The interrogator brought 47's weapons into the room to question him. Faced with 47's arrogant attitude, 
the interrogator loaded the sniper rifle and aimed it at 47, giving him the perfect opportunity. 47 quickly kicked the table away. As the alarm sounded, John immediately broke the window, took down the guards watching him in a few moves, and hurriedly left with Katia, changing his clothes. 47 turns the corner and sees them grabbing a police car and fleeing, but he doesn't panic as he walks quickly up to the top floor. When John and Katia reach the 8th street corner, 47 fired a shot. Fortunately, the bullet only grazed Katia's arm, and John treated her wound. At that moment, the phone rang, John answered, but no one spoke. He immediately realized 47 had arrived. Before John could react, he was shot several times. 47 took Katia to a secret room and told her he wouldn't kill her. John and his associates were only using her to find her father and restart the genetic modification project. 47 even revealed to Katia that she too was a genetically modified person, then 47 extended his hand to Katia. As she grasped it, memories of the past flashed through her mind. It turned out her father was the gene modification doctor of the mysterious organization, and she herself was a product of her father's genetic modification. When her father took her to flee the organization, the little bald boy they encountered on the road was 47. Later, as they were continuously hunted by the organization, her father, to ensure her safety, hit her in the sewer and then lured the assassins away by himself. Since then, Katia never saw her father again. After Katia finished sensing, she questioned 47 why her father had left her. Then, 47 flipped a switch on the wall, and the fan behind Katia started to spin, its strong suction slowly pulling her towards it. Katia immediately closed her eyes and sensed how to break free. Freeing herself from the restraints, Katia understood that 47 was stimulating her potential. Meanwhile, assassins from Syndicate International also arrived at the scene. 47, using Katia's perceptive abilities, appeared unexpectedly behind the assassins, throwing one into a meat grinder with a kick and a punch. Another assassin was swiftly brought down by 47, who twisted and broke his neck. Next, 47 picked up a nailed gun from the table and waited for his prey taking down another with a single shot. Using Katia's perceptive abilities, 47 pressed a switch nearby, splitting an assassin in half. 47 then instructed Katia to divert the assassin's attention while he casually picked up a fan blade as his weapon. Unexpectedly, Katia bumped into John, who knocked her head against a pipe. Then, John turned around to fight with 47. After a struggle, 47 plunged a knife into John's chest, only to find it couldn't penetrate at all. This made 47 instantly realize that John was also a modified human, with titanium liquid in his skin making him impervious to blades. 47 was quickly knocked to the ground by John. Unexpectedly, Katia shot at the glass behind John. The massive impact knocked John unconscious. They quickly escaped, knowing they must find Katia's father without delay. After several of Katia's sensory attempts, they finally located Litvenko. They rushed to find Litvenko. When Katia saw Litvenko, she confronted her father about why he abandoned her. Litvenko could only express regretfully that it was also a form of protection for her. The sudden appearance of 47 made Litvenko mistakenly think that 47 was there to assassinate him. 47 pulled out a pistol and killed the assassin behind Litvenko. Realizing they couldn't stay there long, they quickly escaped to the parking lot and got into a red sedan. Before they could drive out of the parking lot, they were blocked by John's car. 47 immediately reversed and turned around, but the assassins, riding motorcycles, closely followed. 47 executed a sharp turn drift, sending one of the motorcycles flying, yet still couldn't shake off the pursuit. 47 then sped up the car and performed an emergency brake, shedding most of the chasing assassins. He then asked Katia whether to turn left or right. Katia said to go straight ahead, and without hesitation, 47 believed her and drove straight through the glass. Sure enough, there was an exit ahead, and they managed to get ahead of John. John immediately ordered the building to be locked down, with the bollards rising slowly. 47 quickly shifted to the S-gear and accelerated, successfully driving out of the parking lot, just as they thought they were temporarily safe. A steel cable descended from above, latching onto the car's front, spinning it in place. More and more steel cables wrapped around the car. 47 tried to accelerate to break the cables, but the car remained immobile. 
rolling and smoking on the spot. Assassins slid down the cables from all directions. 47 immediately got out of the car and pulled out his pistol, seeing more assassins approaching. 47 could only cover Katia and her father as they left. 47 swiftly killed two of the approaching assassins, an accidental discharge from one of the assassins' guns hit Litvenko in the lower leg. Seeing this, 47 quickly put a mysterious object into Litvenko's pocket and then pulled Katia away. Litvenko also felt something extra in his pocket. He was then taken to the Syndicate International Headquarters. John coerced Litvenko to reveal the data of the gene modification from years ago. Litvenko's attitude was clear. John immediately ordered his men to inject Litvenko with a serum, which quickly had an effect. Leclerc watched all of this unfold before his eyes, worried that John would torture Litvenko to death. He left his office, which he hadn't left for six years. Sure enough, when John was about to give Litvenko a second dose, Leclerc arrived just in time to stop him. Leclerc ordered everyone out to talk to Litvenko alone, but before he could speak much to Litvenko, 47's voice came from inside, telling them to look out the window. When they opened the curtains, they saw a helicopter hovering outside. Leclerc immediately ordered his men to leave with Litvenko. Litvenko didn't forget to take the item 47 had put in his pocket, watching her father being taken away. Katia flew a plane directly into the building. John took advantage of the chaos to escort Leclerc away. When they reached the safe house, 47 had been waiting there for a long time. The moment the door opened, 47 turned and fired a shot but was blocked by John's hand. Then the two engaged in a fight. Bullets couldn't kill John, and the two engaged in a second fight. Although both were modified humans, John was a later, incomplete modification and was much less intelligent and agile than 47. After a fight, 47 deliberately let John win. When John tried to prove he was better than 47, 47 unexpectedly pulled out a wire and strangled John's neck. 47 connected the wire to an electric line, and John was electrocuted to death. Katia arrived at that moment, and they began to pursue, until they reached the rooftop. The minions were like live targets, each shot hitting its mark, bullets seemed to have a life of their own. Each shot precise, Luke Clerk took advantage of their shootout to leave in a helicopter. After they dealt with all the minions, Katia realized her father had been taken into the helicopter. At that moment, a surviving minion aimed at Katia, but 47 saw and quickly shielded her from the bullet. They made a spectacular turn and killed the last minion, watching the helicopter gradually disappear. Litvenko looked at his daughter from the plane. Litvenko took out the object 47 had put in his pocket and pressed it lightly. 47 received a call from the organization, questioning why he hadn't killed the second target. Katia. 47 didn't respond and simply threw the phone off the building. Katia also realized that her father was 47's first target, and the plane explosion was part of 47's plan. 